once upon a time a long long time ago lived a fairy princess and that fairy princess used to read books she used to even make videos about said books now who knows how that story is going to end because heaven knows in the last two months I've read the grand and princely sum of one and one half of a book. Hi, I'm Leah and welcome to Hide and Seek and welcome to the who knows what we're going to call this, uh, jump back into booktube, do a tag, have a chat sort of video. Now I did ask on Twitter what video I should jump straight back into and Laura Fry suggested to just do a chatty general sort of video because I could do it straight away without having to think about it. So I'm going to do the reading habits tag. Now I looked high and low for the creator of the tag on the various ones I checked out but I couldn't find the original so if that's you I apologize in advance for not mentioning it but I looked and looked and looked. Now Claudia from Spinster's Library also suggested the books and cats tag which looks fantastic and we will dive into that when I have the opportunity. Now my dogs are going crazy and I have a big dog sitting here next to me and a little dog just about to jump on the bed so who knows what background noise we're going to get here as well. But anyway, let's get started. I am and have always been a voracious reader and unfortunately the last couple of months have really slammed me with that and my reading habits have changed significantly. So anyway, let's chat a bit about those. Question one, do I have a certain place at home for reading? Now, no, I do generally read anywhere. Now, previously I could read on my phone or a real book at lunchtime, in the car, whilst John was watching TV, in bed, anywhere. However, a couple of things in the last couple of months have impacted on my ability to read, which is causing a big challenge and something that's unexpected. Now. Early in June we lost a family member and that took a week or so of getting back to normal. But the middle of June I hit my head at the gym. Now the moral of the story basically is don't work out. But I hit my head at the gym and it impacted both my vision and my hearing. Now my vision's okay but I now have tinnitus or tinnitus as Sean the book maniac says. And I have this constant ringing in my head which is clearing but it's impacting my ability to sit and concentrate and that's a really big change for me at the present because my quiet alone time to sort of counterbalance my busy in your face working in retail and I liked that headspace quiet time is no longer there because I have this constant ringing which is a big big challenge and big big change in my reading habits. Now I tried audiobooks and that's not doing it anyway as well either because I just am lacking the ability to concentrate. So right now I'm reading about three or four pages in the morning before I get out of bed and another three or four pages at night before I go to bed and that's my only reading time and it's, it's a real change in my reading habits. Now the ringing is getting better and I'm able to cope with it better and that's really good but it just means my voracious and constant reading is really changed. Now also with that which is really funny I'm not watching any booktube if you look at my watch later list there are 420 videos in that watch later list because I am disconnected I think from reading right now and it is frustrating and annoying and it's changing how I'm reacting and relating to the world. Really strange how a change in something that I have always considered part of my work life mental health balance has just really changed with a simple knock to the head. So hopefully that comes back and sorts itself out shortly. Now I've just lost the page. Hold on a moment. Question two. Bookmark or random piece of paper? I generally have a bookmark but I only have two bookmarks on the go. I like actually using a paper clip. I like to just jam it into the paper, into the book. They're cheap as chips, they're sleek and smooth, they stay put, suits me fine. But I have two bookmarks in my books at the moment. 
book lovers never go to bed alone and a nice one I think this is just from the Victorian Albert Museum a fabric one there which are in two half books now the Enchanted April a buddy read with Robert from Barter Hordes fail on Leah's part because that was at the start of June when I just couldn't family issues and work got in the way and this one Howard's End loving this absolutely loving it halfway through and this is the one that is taking me three and four pages twice a day to read and I've never read a book this slowly in my life benefits of that I'm actually enjoying it I'm really enjoying the language the story the the way it's in and I think the slower pace works very well for this style of book now I do have the BBC the new BBC mini series uh, how it's end recorded on my TV so I'm looking forward to watching that when I finish the book but I really actually am loving how it's end question three can you stop reading or do you have to stop at a chapter or a certain number of pages well previously before the head incident I could just stop and start wherever I could keep two or three books on the go and I had no issues stopping or starting I generally like to finish at the end of a paragraph but I didn't really need to wait till the end of the chapter or an end of the page I'm pretty good at stopping and starting now I'm reading until I can't read anymore and sometimes when I'm going back the next day I'm reading that whole page again and it's a real change I feel like a remedial reader and that's that's interesting maybe I should try some children's books or some middle grade books in between and again I failed on a buddy read as well with Heidi as well we were doing Nevermore and again I just fell away on that one as well uh, question four eat or drink whilst reading now I always have a cup of tea on the go when I'm reading and I like to just sip with that. I don't generally eat when I'm reading because otherwise I'd be grazing all day and that's probably not good for my health. Question five, multitasking music or TV whilst reading? Well, up until the big head incident, I would say it didn't really bother me. I could read in a noisy room. I could read when somebody else was watching TV. I could read listening to music though. I did prefer, um, instrumental music rather than music with words but really no issue and it was really good fun there interestingly I have a reading playlist that I created on Apple Music just for my own um, enjoyment my own pleasure it was a list of I think 15 or 16 instrumental vaguely classical sometimes related to movies so I had a bit of a Harry Potter music in there um, just a few different orchestral music in a playlist which I loved and I put it on Apple music and it has been downloaded like 1200 times and I'm going really it's just my random reading playlist so if you want that I'll link that below question six one book at a time or several at once well I used to have three or four on the go I used to be able to have definitely one audio definitely one Kindle definitely one businessy non-fiction-y type book and usually a classic-y type thing on the go as well as whatever modern and current thing I was reading so I was always having three four five books on the go now I'm a one book type of gal I'm really hoping this is going to change and I'm sure it will but right now it's not I need my headspace to read one book slowly and just do it properly um, question seven reading at home or reading everywhere again right now I'm reading just first thing in the morning and last thing at night I used to be able to just pick up a book and stop and start but I just don't have that capacity now and it's yeah it's really changing my reading experience I seem to be saying that a lot in this tag Question eight, reading out loud or silently in your head? Definitely silently in my head. I was sitting on a plane when I was about, oh, I don't know, five or six years ago next to a man who was reading out loud. He was reading Shakespeare. Now, I was initially thought he was practicing or rehearsing for a play, but if he was, it would have been the most monotone, boring, lackluster performance ever because he was just 
reading verbatim line from line from Othello out loud on a plane for two hours? No, just no. Do I read ahead? Question nine, do I read ahead or even skip pages? No, even before, <laughs> before, no. I, I do tend to read, um, if it's a book that's thrilling and, and exciting, I read the end because I need to get that part over so I can go back and actually enjoy the book. I need to know what's going to happen before I do that. But now I just read the page and read the page very, very slowly. Question 10, breaking the spine or keeping it like new? 50-50. So these lovely vintage editions, I tend to like to keep new. These ones, these lovely um, Penguin English Library editions, they tend to crack a lot more readily and the cover's not as nice. I'm not as precious about these, which is almost sacrilegious because so many people collect these, but I don't know. Whereas with the others, I do tend to leave them quite nice, but I'm not that fussy and I quite like an old book. I've got no, nothing against reading an old book that's already cracked and yellowed and smells like old books. Something pleasurable and enjoyable in that. Do I write in my book? Yes, I do. I write in my books a lot. And it's really funny because in my in real life book club, I often write, like read the books first and lend it to a friend and she's going, oh, I love it because I get your notes and then I write my notes. So it's almost like a collective and collaborative reading experience. So that's really good fun. So that was the reading habits tag. A couple of other points from the last month or so. The book I did read and did finish but didn't comment anywhere on social media was Mary Stewart, This Rough Magic. Um, Mel and Ange and everyone in their wonderful Mary Stewart reading book, reading group is just wonderful. I love Mary Stewart and One a Month is just fantastic. I actually really liked This Rough Magic, a bit of a thriller in Greece. I love the exotic locations and the twee, no not twee, vintage but not twee sense of these books. They're just delightful and engaging stories with strong heroines but not angry heroines. They're just really good fun books. I completely missed out on the full Monty read along with Laura and her Count of Monte Cristo. I did buy this brick of a book. I did participate by watching the movie, The Full Monty. Like seriously, if nobody's watched The Full Monty since it came out in the, what was it, late 80s, early 90s, go back and watch it. It is such a sad, bittersweet, lovely, lovely story about just some blokes trying to make it good in Northern England at a t quite an unusual and challenging time in history for them. So I actually really liked it. Also sticking with Laura, she and I are just starting Warlight as a buddy read, Michael Ondaatje. I have a mixed relationship with Michael Ondaatje. I'm only two chapters in and I'm really enjoying this. I, I don't know where it's go going to go. I've read nothing about it and I'm very much looking forward to my discussions with Laura. So that's Warlight by Michael Ondaatje. So that is just a brief hello Hopefully I'm going to be back shortly. Explanation of where I've been, quick tag, have a chat, tell me what you're reading, want to know all about what's going on and the 430 videos I have in my watch later on booktube I will plow through very slowly but I will get there. But really thank you for watching, thank you especially for all the kind thoughts and well wishes that everyone has sent me and made contact through Twitter and Instagram and here on booktube. I love it and appreciate it, I really really do. So thank you so much, that's what makes this wonderful wonderful community so fantastic. Hope everyone is well. I will see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.